Uh, when I first came to the legislature in 2001, Bill Batchelder was one of those guys that was a legend. Um, you know, I didn't have the pleasure to serve with him right then, but I knew of his service. And his service in the state goes back many years. But his service as speaker has been equally legendary. It has been my pleasure to work with my good friend and the Speaker of the House, Bill Batchelder. very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I did come here quite a while ago, uh, actually in 1968, and uh, Jim Rhodes had just won a re-election uh, because he was creating jobs and so forth. Actually, he didn't just win an election. He won 87 counties. I'll never forget when Frazier Reams came downstairs the morning after, he carried Pike County. And uh, they said, what do you think went wrong? He said, I think I spent too much time in Pike County. <laughs> so, there's nobody here old enough to remember that. But it, but it was an exciting time, and it was a great time for the growth of this state. And that growth has only recently been done again. It's been done again in the face of national and international crises, one after another, in monetary supply, in the economy of people. This has been a turnaround. Now, the governor did have an advantage because the federal government had screwed up everything they could screw up. And so when you come in in that kind of a situation, that gives you an edge. And thank God that uh, as this governor came in, he has demonstrated to me one of the things that Rose used to always show as well. And that was, very simply, jobs. Jobs for Ohioans jobs for people outside this state who work for companies that are located in this state. Jobs. And as a result of his efforts, this has been a very important turnaround situation. Over the years, there have been, in my experience, and I've only been there 38 years in the House, and I took time off to be a judge. I was being pretty quiet. I, I, I'm not sure that. I don't know how my wife does that. But anyway, uh, as, as we were looking before this uh, administration started, we were looking at a state that had businesses that were probably going to leave this state. Some already had. I think uh, anybody that goes to NCR and Dayton will be aware of that. Uh, as those things happened, the economy of this state was dying. We were very, very fortunate that at that point in time, a governor came in who was absolutely unafraid to take on challenges and to do things which I might agree or disagree with. But in any case, we were going forward. We were going to change Ohio again. We were going to do the kinds of things that create jobs. There's nothing more important than that for the government the local level to do. It is a sad business that we were in a position after a four-year administration that Keith described so capably to you. It was pretty remarkable that we had 89 cents left of the rainy day fund, but it was not particularly helpful. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? It was also remarkable that we were in a position where we were leading the country in job losses. We were leading the country in a circumstance that, in circumstances that were unpleasant, to put it mildly. And that turnaround that has occurred is fantastic. I wanted to talk a little bit about a, an area that has been entered into, very importantly in my opinion, by this governor. I did not agree with the steps that were taken. But I can tell you that we are now working on a medical plan for the people of this state, which will, in fact, help them in very many ways. Our folks in the House of Representatives uh, actually have undertaken a, I believe right now it's 15 pieces of legislation to strengthen health care in Ohio. You understand we had Medicaid before. And I'm an expert on it because in 1971, 
I was the vice chairman of a committee that did review of Medicaid. Some of you uh, will remember that, most of you certainly won't, that that was a plan that uh, Governor Rhodes entered into. I think it's important also for us to realize the conditions that exist in many, many areas that our committee structure will be looking at. I'm thinking particularly of a, abuse of opioids. In the House, we started legislation which dealt with a problem that we had someone very interested in. For the first time since 1945, we elected a Republican member of the House of Silent County. He was a doctor. He was a man of conviction about what had to be done. And unfortunately for him, he was also in charge of the uh, office which attended to deaths in Scioto County. That was a county that had 40,000 people uh, 30 years ago, and today has plenty. A number of people were dying of abuse of drugs in that small county, rural area. And Dr. Johnson, who came to us in the House, was very upset about it. And he therefore introduced legislation, and I'll never forget, I saw the governor in the morning, the governor said, are you taking up that, that anti-drug bill today, the one that has really drawn a lot of attention across the state? I said, yes. He said, would you mind if I came down and watched the debate? I didn't have the nerve to tell him it's off the television. <laughs> Those of you who know me are aware that I'm technologically challenged. But uh, I we appreciate it very much. The governor came down and uh, he stayed with us for over two and a half hours during a debate that was turning Ohio around, not just in one small rural county in southern Ohio, but across the urban areas of this state. And that change has been dramatic. But boy, do we have a lot of challenges the healthcare field. As I say, we have 15 committees uh, working on 15 bills. And at the bottom line, at the end of the day, it would be my hope when I get to go home one more time. <laughs> you know, that's the funny thing. As soon as you really learn how to work in the legislature, you reach statutory senility, and, and you're sent home. And uh, uh, as I look around this room, I see folks that I served with that particularly get a kick out of uh, some of the directors who have done such a good job in this administration and have been such great legislators. That will be taken forward. We will be looking at problems that young people have in terms of drug abuse. We will be looking at the kind of dietary issues that are in front of us. We will be looking for answers so that as a practical matter, Instead of having the cost of medical care going up each year, we are actually going to be able to reverse that. It's remarkable what has happened in this administration. When John and I had the privilege of coming into office, we had a situation in which the cost of Medicaid was going up over 10% a year. That obviously drives the cost of your medical plans in the private sector as well. After the first year of the governor's administration, and I see one of the uh, two of the directors here who were in charge of changing that system so that it wasn't a matter of continued growth, expense, and cost, but rather it took it from over 10% growth per year to 3.6%. That is amazing. That is remarkable. And that is the reason that a number of us in the House feel that it is our job to assist the governor in what he is doing and to assist him in making a difference in the lives of millions of Ohio. I have known personally all of the governors since John Burton. I was not in the House when John Burton was governor. But on the other hand, I'll never forget him saying something to three terms governor, two terms United States Senator. He said to me one day, you know, Bill, I have one regret, and that's that I never had a chance to serve in the Ohio General Assembly. And I started to ask questions of him, and 
Why is that? Well, of course, he had worked with the General Assembly when he was governor, very close to him. But the real bottom line reason was he saw the cooperation that went on between the houses. He saw the effort by leaders of both houses to work with the governor and to work with each other. And he valued that. Understand, he was a United States Senator for 12 years, and he admired the relationship between the House and the Senate and the Governor. I never forgot that, and I never will forget it. We have worked closely with the other party, but more importantly, with the members of the other House and with the Governor to do things that had to be done so that Ohio, once again, could be one of the best places to live in this country. I think the slogan was, the best location in the nation. We have that opportunity in this period of time. I'm looking forward to some of the very wonderful things that we can do, and also the leadership that our governor provides. He's not afraid to do things that have to be done. He is willing to face challenges that all of us know are there, but a lot of people are not really too excited about dealing with it. This state can do great things for huge numbers of young people, particularly in urban areas. We can reach out and do the kinds of things that will make a difference in the long run, and that Ohio will once again stand out in job growth and the other challenges that we face. I'm honored to be here today, Andy, with you. We've had a wonderful relationship over the years. As he's matured, I've enjoyed it. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I want to say that I'm looking forward to the rest of it. The greatest governor in the country is sitting here with us today in terms of political courage, a desire to serve and to help those less fortunate, and also one who is willing to stand up to those whose criticism has been somewhat fanciful. That is, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the government.